The unit I will demonstrate is called the basic shift. The shift is a loosely fitted garment that hangs straight from the shoulders, concealing the body underneath. Variations of this style is evident throughout history and is currently found in most collections. Although the basic shift forms a straight silhouette, as in this tunic, the A-line flare is a very popular variation. When designed with a yoke detail, another dimension is found. Technically, the shift is structured with the same balance as the basic bodice. Once the straight shift pattern is completed, it may be fitted to the body with darts to develop the sheath dress. We must measure from the top of the plate down to the length that you decide to have your garment, plus two inches for hem. Then we must decide on the width of our muslin. So we measure the fullest part of the body, which can be the bust or the hip level, plus six inches. And we do the same for the back. Once we have those measurements, we block our muslin and we measure 13 inches down from the top of our muslin to draw our apex level across. We come in one inch from our muslin and we draw the length grain down. Once we have our apex level across, we measure from the apex down to the hip tape which is seven inches below from the center waistline across. Taking this measurement straight down, we put that measurement from our apex line down and we draw the hip level across. The next measurement that you need is the apex to center front. You put that across your apex line and draw the muslin brain line straight down. Then you measure side seam to the apex plus an eighth of an inch. We put that measurement on our muslin and draw just a little mark on the apex level. Divide that portion in half and we draw that grain line down. What we've just done was just like your basic bodice that you've done in your very first muslin. Now for the back. We come in one inch from our muslin and we draw that grain line down. We line up our muslin front over back from the bottom up and we draw the hip line across. Once we have our hip line drawn on our muslin, we measure from the hip line with the tape straight up to the shoulder blade level. And we mark that down on our muslin and we draw our shoulder blade level across. Like your basic back, we measure across, sent to back, to the ridge, plus a quarter of an inch, and we mark the shoulder blade level with one little mark. We come in an inch and a quarter and we draw our grain line down. Your muslin now is all prepared for draping. Now we are ready to drape. We take our muslin and pin in the apex. 
placing two pins to hold the muslin in place. Smooth your muslin across the chest area and place a pin at center front. Smooth your muslin up to the neck and place a pin to hold the muslin at center front. Under the apex area, smooth your muslin across and place a pin. Let the muslin fall straight down to the hip level and place a pin at center front and at the torso. The grain line from the apex level must be straight across and our muslin must fall completely straight. Smooth your muslin in and place a pin at the side seam. Place a pin at the hip level and distribute the ease across the apex. We are ready now to drape our top as our basic bodice. Coming up one inch, slash the one inch box and smooth the muslin to the neck and shoulder. Crease your muslin along the neckline. Slash your muslin so that the muslin spreads keeping straight grain across and straight grain up, we put a pin at the neck and shoulder line. Smooth your muslin to the princess and the shoulder. We mark the shoulder line and we mark the princess line. Removing that pin, we crease at the princess line right down to the apex, keeping the muslin smooth under the plate and side seam. Smooth it up to the shoulder and fold back. Place a pin at the princess, smooth your muslin over the shoulder and place a pin at the ridge. Now we are ready to mark the muslin. Crease your neckline, cross the center of the neck, dot the neck every half an inch. Cross mark the neck and your shoulder. Come back to the shoulder line and the bottom part of the pickup of your dart. You come to the ridge and the shoulder and you cross mark your shoulder and the ridge. We dot the ridge down to our screw level. At the screw level, we mark the plate. Come to the plate, cross mark your plate and cross mark your side seam. Now we are ready to take our muslin off the figure and true on the table. Now we are ready to true. On your muslin, you must have your neck mark, your shoulder, your shoulder and the mark of your dart under part of your markup of the dart, your shoulder, the ridge, the dotting of the ridge, the two dots next to each other is the ridge and the plate, under the plate and the side seam. We're going to true the dart first. Taking your ruler, marking from the closest mark to the neck, down to the apex, we come up the basic half an inch and we connect to the other part of our pickup of our dart.
and we true that out. We now have to drop a grain line from the plate side seam cross mark all the way down our muslin. Once we have that, we are ready to true in our neckline. True in the basic neckline first, making sure that you have a quarter of an inch straight grain at center front and connect to the shoulder. We come down a quarter of an inch or a half an inch as your preference and connect back to the neckline and shoulder. Turn your muslin so that center front faces you and close the shoulder dart. Close your dart. Keeping your muslin nice and flat, we connect the shoulder line at the ridge to your neckline. Give yourself one inch seam allowance and cut. You mark a half an inch around the neck, and I'm going to be marking from my dropped neckline. Now we pin this back onto the figure, pinning in at the natural neckline first, then at the shoulder and neckline, your princess and shoulder line, and the ridge and shoulder line. Smooth your muslin across the chest area and place a pin. Place a pin at the hip level, smooth your muslin up, and place another pin under the chest area. And one at the torso, one at the plate line and side seam, and at the side seam and hip line. We must keep this grain line perpendicular to the floor. We crease right along that line and place a pin to hold it in place. Make sure that your grains follow through and place another pin. Do the same thing at your hip level. Sometimes this line does not fall exactly at the side seam, but can vary further back. It's not to be worried about. Now that we have our muslin pinned back, we must slash our muslin at the ridge so that we can drape our back 
over our front. And we slash at a 45 degree angle so that our muslin lays flat. Taking our back panel, folding our crease down the one inch level along the length grain, we start by pinning in at center to back hip. Place a pin so that your muslin is in place. Bring it up to your shoulder blade level. and place a pin there, keeping your muslin straight, and a pin at the neckline and center back. At our shoulder blade level, we must move in the ridge mark to the ridge. Keep your muslin straight across the back, and keeping this part in here, your inch and a quarter, completely straight. We put a pin there to hold that in place. Distribute your ease across the back and place pins to hold it. Now we have to place the muslin at the side seam to line up with the grain lines of the front. Place a pin there temporarily. You will notice the sag of the muslin, which, which means that the grain line has to be picked up from this point. The rest of your muslin remains straight with this difference, where it slightly raises. Along the ridge here, for an inch and a half to two inches, Crease your muslin along the length grain so that your muslin can fall into a nice box in here and you can bring it under the arm. But before that, we must slash our muslin to the plate, staying at least a half an inch away from the ridge. Let your muslin fall into your little box here, smooth it to under the plate and place a pin at the plate and side seam. Keep your muslin nice and straight. Make sure that you have it balanced along the lengthwise edges. Once you have that, you are ready to drape the top of your muslin along your neck and getting your shoulder dart to line up with the front dart you have here. We smooth the muslin to the neck, but we must slash along the neckline so that our muslin can spread nicely. Draping over our front bodice, we place the pin at the neck and the shoulder. Smooth your muslin coming up, and we take another pinch right on the shoulder line for ease. Smooth your muslin again to the princess. Place the pin, and now we are ready to mark for our dart. I cross mark the shoulder and the princess line. Then I crease along that line that I have just marked, and I take up my dart, which is approximately a quarter of an inch on the double, and I pin that in. Then I smooth my muslin going up over the shoulder, and I place a pin to hold that in place. Next I have to do is my little pinch between the princess and the ridge. And I take another pinch at the shoulder seam. And I smooth my muslin to the ridge, place a pin at the shoulder and the ridge.
Now we are ready to mark. Cross mark the back of your neck, dot your neckline every half an inch. to the shoulder and cross mark the neckline and your shoulder line. Dot your shoulder line to your princess, which you have already marked. Move the dart over to one side and cross mark the pickup of your pin and cross mark your shoulder line. Continue dotting along the shoulder to the ridge. At the ridge, we cross our shoulder and we cross our ridge. We dot the ridge to the shoulder blade level and we stop. Then we mark the plate line and the side seam. We take off our muslin Before we do that, we must also mark where our end of our little dart is. Since we have no other darts here to guide us, we come down to the princess line, and we feel it at shoulder blade level, and just place a little dot on your muslin. Then remove your muslin. Now we're ready to true. We mark a lengthwise grain at side seam from the plate down to the bottom of our muslin. Remove your pins. Check to make sure that you have your dart marked in. You must have your neckline, your shoulder line, the marks of your dart, the remaining part of your shoulder, the ridge, and the dots marked to the shoulder blade level. If you have all of those, you can proceed to true out your neckline. Keeping it straight for a quarter of an inch at center back. Give yourself your half an inch seam allowance. At your dart, the mark closest to the neckline, we line up our ruler to the little dart we have here on our shoulder blade level. And darts are three inches long. So coming from this point, I come down three inches, I stop follow that up, and connect to the other mark of my pickup of my dart. Keeping my muslin center back toward me, I crease in my little dart and I pin that closed. And I am ready to do my shoulder line. I give myself one inch seam allowance. and I cut that out. Okay. 
I turn my muslin face down and I take off my front from the figure And I line up my hip line to my hip line in the back. My drop line, hip line, to the hip line and drop line of the back. Making sure that they line up. Once that is done, then I pin going up to my plate line. Keep checking that it is pinned right on that line. Once you have that pinned, you pin the remaining part down to the bottom of your hem. Check to make sure that you pinned right along, pin line on top of line. Once you have done that, we are ready to true out our armhole. Place the carbon underneath the back. We come down one inch from the plate line, and we come out a half an inch. Make sure that you mark your half inch mark so that it can be seen as a finished point. Taking your hip ruler, line up the straight part of your ruler along the straight drop line that we have here. Keep moving that ruler up along the line until it touches the half inch mark. Once you have done that, it has touched that mark and it's straight along this line, you can true in your side seam. Again, I maintain that you mark your underarm so that you know where your finished part of the underarm is at. You can now give yourself one inch seam allowance because this is the basic straight shift. And cut. Now you can remove your pins. and you are ready to finish out your armholes. Lining up the half inch mark in between your two dots and the shoulder ridge line, we true in the armhole. Give yourself a half an inch seam allowance. and cut. And our front is finished. We put to the side. We take our back of our muslin. We come down from the ridge, straight grain for an inch and a half to two inches. We take our ruler, which is a French curve, 
keeping it straight along the line until we touch the half inch mark that we have here. We drew in the bottom of our armhole, turning it over, keeping it straight along this line till we touch our shoulder, and we drew that in. We give ourselves half an inch seam allowance. And we cut. Some people prefer to cut at a level like this so that you don't lose your plate line. That can be done, but as you saw in my front, I did cut the armhole out. We do that in case we have to change our armhole. I will finish trimming this off so that it will match to my front. Turning my muslin to the back facing me, I pin my side seam starting at the hip. Since this is a straight skirt, completely straight, I am going to even out my muslin. So that it coincides with the front. Then I give myself a two inch hem. and I pin my hem up. I now close my shoulders, starting at the neck, I place the pin there, at the ridge another pin is placed, line up the darts together, place another pin. We distribute our ease and a pin is placed in the middle. And the same goes from the ridge to the dart. Your shift is now completely finished. And this is the basic straight shift. For variations on the shift, which can be an A-line or a fitted sheath. Where darts are taken or a flare is allowed at the side seam. A-line silhouette.
To do an A-line shift, we keep our side seams, which are our drop lines, pinned together. From the figure here, we can decide at what point we want our flares. We have the hip level, which can start our A-line. We have the waistline, where you can also put in your A-line, or the hip bone, which is the most graceful part for the flare to come out, which is shown on this muslin, where you have your A-line branching from the hip bone. Placing a pin at your level at the hip, we now can take our muslin off and on the table draw in our flare. Before we do our flare, we must come down one inch from the plate line, come out the half an inch, and mark your half inch mark. Pass your carbon paper underneath, and with your hip ruler, line it up, keeping the hip ruler straight grain along your drop line here with the straight, and then true in your side seam. For your A-line shift, you should not come out more than two inches because that means redraping the garment completely. So we generally come out an inch and a half to two. I shall come out an inch and a half. Taking my ruler to my pinpoint at my drop line, I drew in this line. I must pass my carbon up further to get this part of my line. After the line is marked, we add one inch seam allowance. Cut the seam line. And then you proceed to mark your armholes as we did on the straight shift. And pinning this back to get your A-line silhouette. The sheath dress without a waistline seam can be developed from the shift sloper. Once developed, this body is also considered a basic sloper. To achieve a sheath out of our basic shift, we must take in darts. We start off by creasing the apex line down, release your hip pin, and at the waistline, we are going to take 3 eighths of an inch. But before we do that, place a pin above the waist and place a pin just below the waistline so that the muslin skims the waistline. Then take in approximately 3 eighths of an inch on the double. Come into your second grain line, 
we crease that down, and we take at the waist again approximately 3 eighths of an inch. on the double. Coming to the back, remove your hip pin, and we take a pin and place it above the waistline at center back, and also below the waistline. Smooth the muslin towards your princess. Mark the princess line and your waistline, and take three-eighths of an inch on the double at the inch and a quarter from our shoulder blade level we crease that line and again at the waistline we take in three-eighths of an inch on the double this leaves our muslin quite loose but we must now take in our side seam. At the waistline, we take again 3 eighths of an inch on the double. This leaves it again a little loose. So what we do is we go back to the very first one and take it in a little deeper. And we do the same on this one until we get what we want. Here we have to release this pin because we must maintain the princess line and take in more muslin. And we do the same thing here on the double, a little larger. Now we come to the side seam again and we take that in a little deeper. Our darts start a half an inch below from the apex. So we have no marking to do there. But we do have a marking I am distributing my E so that my muslin falls a little nicer. Approximately three and a half inches down from the waistline, I will put a diminishing pin to tell me approximately where my dart is going to go. Now we come back to the back and we have to take our diminishing points at our length of our dart. Generally they are five and a half or shorter. Making sure that you do not go too deep, I will just put a pin approximately in here. On the table, we will measure to make sure that we have them. The length of your darts in here depends on my underarm. So that I will do also on the table. But I must maintain that my grain lines along in here, especially when I am going to do the side, that I straighten this out and I place pins so that I do not take too much when I'm doing my side seam. I must keep these grains along in here straight. I come to the front and I must make sure that my grains are straight along here also. So I am going to place some pins to hold that. If you find you have a pull as I have such here, we move this over and we may have to change the position of that dart, keeping my grains straight along in here. I will release this and move my dart slightly over. which means I must find a new center grain line there. And I will move this over. If you find you have a slight pull in your muslin like I have, we must straighten this out. Get your straight grains coming down. 
And we may find that in order for this to fall right, we may have to release this dart slightly. And take it up in our side seam. When we have this straight, now we are ready to take in our side seam. We have the waist taken in, but now that I have moved a little bit in here, I have to redo that. I place pins along the side seam along the hip, curving my hip, but not going all the way down because we do not want to release the fullness at the hip level. At this point here, we are going to take our straight grain going up, just like our basic, and the back. We have our back pinned in straight, and we have the front pinned in straight now. Now we must mark in our waistline and our darts. Find your waistline here and just cross mark the waist and the pickup of your pin. Do the same thing on the other side. At this dart and the pickup. I have this side marked. I must mark the other side and the pickup of my pin, marking my waistline. And I do the same thing with this dart. Now I am ready to do my side seam. I must mark my waistline at both sides. I pass my pencil through to mark it on this side so that I get a mark at my waistline on that side. I mark just the pickup of my pins because I am going to be using a hip curve. And I mark the pickup of this pin. Once that is done, I can take off my muslin. And we are ready to true the darts in. To true out the sheath, we first do our side seam so that it's easier to work on the other darts. Pass your carbon underneath. And we'll do our upper side seam first. I remove this pin, which is in the way. And I am going to place a few pins just away from where I am working so that the ruler and my pen draw in a nice straight line. So now I can remove these pins. I connect first my body line, which is from the plate to the waistline. This is my down the one inch and out the half inch, and I will connect that line down to the waistline. And I cross mark at the end of my armhole. I have already marked part of my garment here with the pins while it was on the figure so I can remove these pins. And in order to get a nice hip curve in here, I am going to put some pins on the inside of my markings 
so that I can drew it nicely. Once that is flat, I remove these pins in here, and I take my hip curve, and I mark in my hip line. I now give myself one inch seam allowance. But before I go any further in here, I have a point. We do not sew in points, so I must blend this line in here. And then I continue with my one inch. Now I can cut now I can take my two pieces of muslin apart so that it is easier to handle. I will do my darts first. I check myself first to make sure that I have everything marked. Then I can remove these pins. Keeping my muslin flat, I come down my half an inch from the apex and I connect to my pin marks at the waistline. And I do the same thing on my other dart, coming down a half an inch, and I drew in this dart. These are my diminishing points. I am going to measure to see how much I have, and according to this, it is three and a half. And I will measure this one, and that's approximately three and a half. So I will use my diminishing points, and I'll cross mark them. And I will connect to the waistline. And I do the same thing here. I go to my back, and I check to see that my darts are marked the right way before I remove any pins. This is my dart pickup and my waistline. I have a guide, which is my half inch mark out at the arm plate. I take my ruler and I line this up. While on your basic, we have used that as a guide for the top of your darts. For a slightly fitted dress like this, it is always best to come a little lower, between a half an inch two three quarters of an inch. And then mark where your dart is going to be. I mark this one because I haven't got my line across here yet. So this is my guideline. I can true in this dart I must find the center grain line of this dart. So 
with your pin, find out, first of all, how big it is. Find the center of your dart and draw your grain line uh, up. Do the same thing going down to your diminishing pin. This is my mark for my end of my dart, so I will cross mark that, and I will draw in the remaining part of my dart. Back darts should not be longer than five inches. I am going to make this exactly where my diminishing points are at, which on this garment is five, four and a quarter, four and a half rather. cross mark the end of my dart. We have points in here that we do not sew. So that means that on all of these we must blend by shaving a little off on all of these darts. The same goes for the front. I start closing my back dart, keeping my muslin facing me at center back, and I crease on the new line of the dart, and I pin. And in the bottom of my dart. Close your second dart, being sure that you do not use the pointed part of the dart, but the new line you have drawn. We now turn our muslin over, and we slash at a 45 degree angle at the waist so that our muslin can spread open. Take your front, having it facing you so that you close your darts the proper way using the new line at the waist. Now we close our side seam. We start by pinning the hip line. Pin in the underarm.
Again, be sure that you do not pin the pointed part but the curved part of your muslin that you have marked. Now the muslin is placed back up on the figure for any minor corrections that may be necessary. Finish pinning in your shift in place, your sheath rather. And once you have that all done, this is your finished sheath, which you made out of your basic shift.